Pizza and Tap Room. Here's the voice of the Aggies, Scott Gerard. Well, Scotty G tonight is on his way back from St. George, where he was invited to be a part of Spencer Cox's inauguration ceremony this morning. And uh, what an honor for Scotty G to, to be a part of that. Sitting in tonight, Kevin White, uh, Scotty's sidekick for the uh, Aggie football broadcast. We've done a couple of basketball games together as well. Last one we did together was the uh, 2019 uh, Mountain West Conference Basketball Championship game down in Las Vegas. The first time that Utah State defeated San Diego State. Uh, we're, we're, we're awaiting Coach Craig Smith to join us here in just a minute. But uh, we're here at the old Chicago Pizza and Tap Room. Thad Willis and his staff do a great job here. Great beverages, excellent food. What an atmosphere. Uh, we'll expect uh, Coach to join us here in just a minute. Coming off of a couple of really good victories over against the Academy in, in Colorado Springs last week. When you look at it, uh, the first game uh, last, uh, what was it, Wednesday, I guess it was, uh, an 83-48 victory over the Academy where you had uh, a bunch of guys making contributions like they have every game. Justin Bean had 15 in that game. How about Nimi Keita? Uh, Keita he's, that young man is putting on quite a show. Um, second week in a row that he's going to be the, uh, the America First Credit Union uh, U USU student athlete of the game. You know, he walked away from those two games averaging 12 and a half points, uh, a, a dozen rebounds. And what was really fascinating to me is watching Nimi play. He had five assists in the first game and another six in the second game. He walked away with 11 assists and is second on this team in assists right now. What a, what a performance for the big man for Utah State. And we'll ask Coach when he gets here a, a little bit more about the big man. Uh, would he like him to get a few more shots, perhaps? Would he like him to, to maybe uh, be a little bit more aggressive to the, to the basket? He's such a good passer, and he gets all of his teammates involved, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what Coach has to say there. We'll talk a little bit also about uh, the games coming up this week against uh, New Mexico. New Mexico 0-4 in league, whereas Utah State 4-0 for the first time since back in the WAC days, 2012 and 2013, when Utah State started league play at 4-0. First time in Mountain West Conference play that Utah State has started the conference schedule at 4-0 and at top of the league right now uh, and playing very, very well. We'll talk a little bit about uh, New Mexico, who, by the way, those games will be played in Lubbock, Texas, if you can imagine, where uh, New Mexico right now is, is housing themselves. Uh, those games will be on, uh, on uh, CBS College Sports on Wednesday night. And then on Friday night on FS1, Utah State, and obviously right here also on the Aggie Sports Network from uh, Learfield IMG College, we'll have those games for you as well. And Scotty G will be back on the call for those games. So a lot to talk about when Coach gets, gets here with us. Uh, I know that they were just finishing up practice, uh, maybe delayed just a little bit. Maybe he's, uh, he's got one more play he wants to design. They haven't had enough practices so far this year. With all this weirdness of the, of the season, with COVID, with everything else, uh, getting as much practice time with his kids as he possibly can, you can't blame a coach for wanting to be with those kids. When we, again, look back at the two games last week against, uh, against the Air Force Academy, uh, you remember last year that Utah State went over to the Academy and, and got a big lead early and, uh, and then had a little bit of a, a challenge in the second half, and, and the Air Force Academy ran away from Utah State, and there was a turning point in the season, really, from that game. Well, no problem this year. Utah State really handled business. They got after the, the Academy early and often, had big leads at halftime in both games, and were able to really uh, move those games away. And meeting us right now, Coach, put those headsets on. We were just saying, you, you might have wanted to have a little bit more time with your kids in practice. You haven't had enough practice time with these kids yet this year, have you? They've had enough of me. I never get <laughs> enough of them. But uh, Thanks, everyone, for coming out. Uh, I was at practice. Um, we're, we were just wrapping up, so um, some things get away from you a little bit. We had a spirited and great practice today, so high energy, upbeat. It was great to see. What, what, what does spirited mean? I mean, do these guys like to get after each other in practice and scrimmage situations? They do. Uh, they love to compete. They love to play. Um, you know, they get a little sick of the, oh, another drill type of thing, right? So they, they love to throw it up, play five on five and compete. Uh, we did a couple um, things we haven't done for a while, so that was new. Um, but it was great. Uh, you know, you never, you know, it, it's interesting because with this new format, we're going to be on the road eight out of ten days. And you just get back, 
you have the one day off, you feel like you're around each other nonstop in the hotel and just all that. And, uh, and now you're back on a plane tomorrow, yeah. you know, to Lubbock, Texas. We're playing a, you know, I mean, like, it's just, it's crazy. To play New but, Mexico. Yeah, to play New Mexico. It's uh, kind of crazy. But, but we had a spirited, just, we had super high energy, a lot of communication. I thought we were flying all over the place. Um, uh, just playing really connected on both sides. And, uh, you know, sometimes after a day off, you know, like, like honestly, our first two years after a day off, we weren't always our best, so to speak. I haven't seen that with this team necessarily, mm. uh, but you're still always guarded, yeah. you know, with that day off, whether it's eating like, you know, sitting on the couch, eating Doritos and drinking Mountain Dews and, and who knows what else. Like all these um, people here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but the, you guys are all well-oiled machines, though. So, <laughs> That's true, true. You know, not not uh, college men's basketball players. Hey, let me ask you, before we get to, we talk a little bit about the, the weekend that was at, at the academy. Uh, Scotty G, not here tonight. Uh, we got a serious upgrade right well, now with Kevin. <laughs> no, 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 no. No doubt no, about that. That's what you were trying to no, insinuate. Uh, <laughs> he was invited by the governor to be at his inauguration in St. George today. Oh, wow. That's why Scotty G's right here, was not here right now. How do you feel be, being second fiddle to the governor? Uh, well, I, I'm, sec I'm like sixth fiddle in my house, so uh, <laughs> that's nothing new uh, for me. So it's just the story of my life. <laughs> now, my son Landon's right here with his friend Peyton. Landon's the brains of the whole operation in the Smith household. There we go. Just so you know. Not that that's super hard to do, but uh, he is the brainiac of the family. Does, he got his, a, does he, his mom believe that too? Does she agree she, with that His assessment? mom does uh, agree with that. He okay. got his first A- minus of his life uh, last semester. Oh, good for I him. Know. No more Bs. Like Math 17 uh, or something like that it's called. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, let's talk a little bit about last week. Uh, you know, last year you had that – game against the academy and you had a good lead in the first half and then they they kind of ran away a little bit in the second half. not this year you guys were connected you guys were playing well all the way from 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 opening tip talk yeah. about the performance of your guys last weekend well we had a great mindset and you know that first game after christmas break although we've always performed very well we we always try to give our guys probably a little more time than most people away to be with their family and so on and so forth and um, I think you get that back tenfold, you know, when they do that, just the mental getaway. Now, that felt like our fourth Christmas break with all the quarantines and <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. We had all of the international guys that couldn't go home over at the house. That was really a, a, a really neat thing for, I know, for our family and hopefully for them. But, you know, our guys played really connected. I thought we had three very good days of practice. Their stuff is very difficult to prepare for. And it's hard to go against, especially when you've never done it before. And we got a lot of guys that had never done it before. And honestly, I was on, on eggshells a little bit because you just don't know. You can get a feel in practice against when, you're, when your scout team is running the Princeton offense. But it's just hard to emulate their pace and their speed that they run it. But we had a great mindset the whole uh, time, in particular that first game. Uh, we played so unselfish. I mean, I think we had 14 assists in the first half. Um, and then, of course, ended with 26 assists or 24 assists and nine turnovers. And we just kept making the extra pass over and over and over again. We made some def uh, mistakes defensively. But what saved us on that end, we, just, we created so many turnovers. I think we forced them into 26 turnovers, which led into some easy baskets. Uh, a big key to that game, uh, we said at halftime, was like this first five minutes, let's come out, play the way we were, and let's try to bury them. Yeah. You know, right here, and we did. We scored. We stopped them on seven of their first eight possessions, and then on the flip side, we scored on eleven of our twelve first possessions. And it was a thing of beauty. I get goosebumps thinking about it because it's just, you know, I'm not an expert in soccer. I'm not an expert in hockey, but I know the little bit I've seen those. It's just so fluid when they're kicking it around and passing or hockey where they're just. And that's what we were on the basketball floor. It was just boom to boom. And it just was a thing of beauty. And um, and I just thought we had tremendous energy and, and connected. And yeah. that's been a big emphasis for our, us the last month is we need to get connected. And we certainly did on the defensive end earlier than the offensive end. But you're starting to really see some good things on the offensive end of the floor here probably the last four games or so. So two questions there. Then, uh, you know, you come back for game two. And when you've got to that day in between, are you focusing more on 
your stuff or because you know they're going to make adjustments and I think they came out and threw a zone at you in the second game and did a few other things to, to try to disrupt but uh, then you come out and you're 14-0 right out of the gate in game two as well yeah it, it's di it's definitely different and we've certainly talked about it without overanalyzing going into the San Jose and how do you handle the off day and then when you're on the road and in Colorado Springs they have a mandate in their county like none of the restaurants are open um, even to meet in a banquet room in the hotel or to eat together, we couldn't do that. So there was even that whole thing was a new deal as well. And so you're, you're, there's just a lot of things going on. So you're thinking of yourself and who played well. How can we help each individual player be set up for more success? How can we help our team? And then you got to try to anticipate what they're going to do differently especially when you come off a big win, you're guarded against human nature. You don't want them sitting in their beds all day, but you don't want them on their feet all day. And what's their mindset like after a yeah. kind of resounding, which is a good problem to have, having a resounding W. But um, I know Joe Scott at Air Force is a really good coach. He's been a head coach for 17 years. Um, I, I've, when I was an assistant at Colorado State in Nebraska, I always had the scouts – for the Princeton offensive teams. It's very difficult to prepare for. I know it well. And Joe Scott's the best around in running that stuff. So I have so much respect for him. The stuff that we scored on rather easily in game one, we had a very difficult time scoring on in game two, which we knew would be the case. So you're always just trying to think, what adjustments are they going to make? And then we're trying to anticipate what they could do to give it to our guys without get them overthinking, if that makes sense. So it's a fine line with all is that it, kind of is stuff. Is it a situation where you, in game two you're having to make more in-game adjustments perhaps than you have in, in, in years past? I would, I would say that's very accurate. It's just I think it's harder to score in game two. It's more – I just feel like it's more of a rock fight, yeah. you know, with what's going on that way. And teams are always prepared for that second game, but the difference is usually it's not – two games in three days where everybody already knows the scouting report so well, right? All they've heard for, in that case, was five straight days of right. Air Force. Our guys are so happy to prepare for New Mexico today. Maybe that was part of it. They were sick of Air Force for five days. So, oh, we got someone else. We don't have to worry about back cut, hook and post, flare screen, down, you know, like all that kind of stuff. So yeah. now we got to worry about, you know, they're – you know, they play volleyball at the rim because they're just sending yeah. four and five guys to the offensive glass. Yeah. They're the number two offensive rebounding team in the country. So it's just polar opposites from that respect. But I thought our guys handled it well. It was kind of that second game. I said in the post game show, it was almost like four games in one because we got off to that great start. And, and then it was almost like human nature tells you, well, this might be easy. Um, uh, Ajay's already giving me the hook in the first time I'm live at <laughs> old Chicago. He's like, all right, cut it off. It's, it's the first like, time uh, in a year you've been here, uh, right? Hall of Fame speech. <laughs> True story. Get in, our, our three teams at Mayville State last year got inducted to the Hall of Fame. I spoke for an hour straight. They finally came in. They cut me off from a, our own Hall of Fame speech. I'm like, oh, welcome home, I guess. So I thought it was kind of fitting, though. But anyway, I know we got to get to break. Um, but it was like three or four games within the game, but I thought we finished it out in good fashion, and it's always good to get two road dubs against a tough team and a tough place to play. Well, two great road victories for Utah State. Uh, go to 4-0 in conference, 7-3 overall. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, New Mexico coming up. I do want to come, when we come back, we're going to actually talk to Stephen Ashworth yeah. as well. And uh, I want to have you ask him a question or two okay. if you're interested in this. But uh, we'll talk to Stephen in just a minute. And I do want to ask you about your big man as well before we're done tonight. Remind me. Okay. Because he is. Uh, we got four in, of them. He's turning into Magic Johnson on the floor right now, isn't he? <laughs> that big guy. Oh, uh, he can pass. He, he's, uh, yeah, he is a fun guy to be around for we'll, sure. We'll talk more about that when we come back here on the Aggie Coaches Show with Craig Smith from Old Chicago Pizza and Tap Room and on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Staker Parson Companies has built a preferred source for sand, rock, and landscape products, ready mix concrete, asphalt, paving, and construction services in your community for over 65 years. From the parks you play in to the roads you drive on, 
you can count on the Staker Parson team to deliver quality products and projects safely, timely, and efficiently. For more information or career opportunities, visit StakerParson.com. the Aggie Coaches Show with Craig Smith, Aggie basketball coach. And uh, this is the first time you've done this here live this year, isn't it? It is. I'm excited. It's, uh, I missed it. You know, it was a difficult thing. And, you know, um, I, I, I love coming to the radio show. And But when all this was going on, you know, you're around a lot of different people. And if I test positive, then you're out for 10 days. Or, you know, you have direct contact, you're out two weeks. And just all that stuff that you're guarded against. And so... Obviously, now I've had it. I was very fortunate. It was very, I had very, very, very minor symptoms, and um, and now I get to be at the radio show the rest of the, the the rest of the year. So I'm excited about that. Get to hang out with some Aggie fans. I know. You know, it's like the good old days. <laughs> now if we can get them back in the spectrum. Yeah. What? What's that? Uh, wouldn't that be nice the, to do it in the spectrum? Yeah. Do it in the that spectrum. would that would be cool. But this, <laughs> like this is such a great setup. Got a great atmosphere in here. The food is amazing. But they even brought me a cup of coffee. I already said I had four of them <laughs> between film and practice. I didn't really need another one at 6.30 at night. Well, the so monster, the monster's the coming at 6.30, so yeah, yeah, I think right, you should be okay. Exactly. I think we're good. So, uh, <laughs> But it's great to be back and feel – it just kind of feels like part of the season, you know, when you get yeah. to this point. And it's so – it's so um, on the flight back, right, there's 20 conference games this year. We've already played four. So 20% of our league season's already done. And, and we, had, you know, we had the opportunity to play 27 games right now where it'll be 26 unless we reschedule or unless we schedule another game. But, I mean, that's – we've already played 10. We only got 17 left. Like, we're not that far from yeah. being – it's just such a different kind of vibe. But I do think now that we get rolling, there'll be some somewhat normalcy here, um, hopefully, um, the rest of the way. Well, I want to come back to uh, to Nimi. Yeah. Uh, Ked. I mean, what a weekend he had. Oh. I mean, average 12 and a half points, average five and a half assists a game. I'm curious, though, do you, he's such an unselfish player. He's he such is. a team guy. Mm -hmm. Do you want him to be a little bit more selfish at times? At times, but he's such a good, he's such a weapon. Well, he's a weapon scoring, but he's such a lethal passer that it just depends on how they're playing him. I mean, Air Force, I mean... The first play of the first game, we run a play that we run, and he's the. I mean, it was like the parting of the Red Sea, and he has a wide open dunk. Raleigh made a good pass, um, great vision on that play, and and then we had a couple other one, and then after that, they were just loading to him. So whether he was just posting up, it was like there was three guys around him. Whether it was screen and roll, they were especially in game two, they just were flooding Takeda on every roll, and they were going to say nope. And he, obviously, he's 6'11", seven seven-foot with shoes. So he's a lot bigger than their, than their guys. So they're just saying, you know what? But, you know, not a lot of big guys have that talent or vision to be able – it's one thing to see it. Then you got to be able to deliver it, you know, amongst three guys with their arms just like this. And our guys did a good job of cutting and meeting the ball. 
But we say it over and over. There, you know, there was times in game two, in particular in that first half, where we just stopped looking inside. And I thought we took quick, out of rhythm shots. Not that we can't make some of those, but they were just weren't rhythm shots. And we showed them the film in game one when we threw it inside. Oh my gosh, Nimi was just dropping dimes everywhere. I think he had six assists in that first game and with no turnovers. And so we know great things happen when we throw it in there. And that doesn't mean we need to, you know, just stare it down and just jam it in there at all costs. But you you saw when they we got off to that quick start and when they made their run back, we didn't defend as well, but we stopped throwing it in the post. We stopped throwing it in there. And that second half, we made a concerted effort. We need to get the ball moving, throw it inside. Great things will happen. And that's exactly that second half he dominated. And 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 I think Justin was the beneficiary. Justin Bean was the beneficiary of what, maybe four of those where he scored 14 in the second He's, half. And yeah. Four of those were dimes by by Nimi. Yeah, he you know, Justin's such a unique player. We all know how hard he plays and he's worked so hard at developing a jump shot. It was great to see him knocking down two threes in that first game. Uh, when he shoots, I feel like it's going in. But I see what he does in practice every day. Not everybody gets to see that. So I keep telling him, when you're open, shoot it. So it was good to see him. And he, so he's, he's still got to be the same player he always has been because he's pretty dang good at being Justin Bean. But he's still kind of working on how do I fit in with that ability to shoot. You can see his, his ball handling has really improved. But when he just cuts like that, he's such a – his first step is so quick and he's so strong and powerful. And uh, those two have such a dynamic connection together. That was one thing, though, you brought up Kato's passing. When I went to Portugal when he got hurt, there was, five, I don't know, five, six NBA scouts there. And two different scouts said to me, like, I saw him play a year ago at this same event. And he couldn't, they couldn't believe how much better his passing had gotten throughout his freshman year. And now last year, just fighting, he still was a good passer, but I think he's even taken it up a whole nother level this year. And not many bigs can pass like that. Well, and then as he, he starts to finish at the rim, even he's getting stronger and stronger. He's recognizing when the double's coming, and he's getting better and better. So it's fun to watch his progression. It, and I'm sure you get to see it every day. I don't, I don't know if you can see it practice by practice, but we can certainly see it game by game. Yeah, it's probably a little harder for me to see that, but you, you kind of get a little bit numb to some of the stuff he starts to do. And what's exciting, I think, about our team is we're – I think we're – and I told our guys this today, we're just so balanced – that we have a lot of different guys that can make you pay when you make a mistake. I love how our starting five, or I think our starting five is playing really, really well. And so now the next step, we just got to get more, you know, Ashworth has shown more consistency. And Trevin Dorius, except for maybe the last game, is really playing well. Like you pretty much know what you're going to get out of him every night when you throw him on the floor. Uh, I thought Bearstow had three really good games. Not quite as good the last game out. Um... But just getting that feeling where you know what you're going to get uh, on a consistent basis, night in from yeah. night out, in particular from our guys coming off the bench. Yeah, I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Maybe in our final segment, uh, we'll get to that. But uh, let's turn our attention now to, to New Mexico. But before we do that, I read a stat here just a minute ago. In your three years, two and a half years here, uh, you're 28 and 0 when holding opponents under 60 points. Huh. Let's do it every game. Oh, why not? It's not rocket science. <laughs> How hard can it be, right? <laughs> and and uh, when you out-rebound your opponent, I think it, the record shows, what, 58 and 11 or something like that. Now you're going up against, you mentioned it, these guys, are they just chucking it at the rim and then they're just sending everybody? Uh, what is it that, that makes this team at New Mexico so difficult, averaging 43 rebounds a game, their opponent's 32? I mean, their rebound margin is off the charts. You guys are number two in the league in, in rebounding. And, that's, and you have out-rebounded every opponent so far this season. Is that an emphasis here going into these two games? Oh, it's a, it's a huge emphasis. Um, they're, they're big, strong, and athletic. Uh, and they are, I mean, they have a 6'6", two guard, 6'6", three man, you know, and they start up with kind of a Dennis Rodman type of four man. Um, um, number five, Rod Brown, who is, like I told Justin Bean today, and I've never told him this in my I don't know that I've ever told him this in two and a half years of coaching him, but I was like, you know, this guy has got a motor very, very similar to yours. Like, he is all over the place. And um, and he's just going to crash and just play so hard. He's everywhere. Uh, and then they have their bigs, which are, you know, 6'9 and 6'10 or whatever. So they're big, strong, athletic. Um, you know, when they throw it up, they're sending four guys. I've seen them send five guys. On a rare occasion, they're sending three guys. 
but that's clearly a monster emphasis for them. They they throw it into the post. 70, 74% of their shots are from the two. So a lot of that is post touches um, or just putting their head down and driving. And so when you miss a shot after you collapse the defense or you get a defense in rotation, like we tell our guys all the time, any shot at the rim is a good shot. So if you throw it up there and a shot blocker has got to rotate to the ball, now that, like Nimi, let's say, is rotating to block a shot. Well, that leaves his guy on the weak side with an offensive rebounding lane, and that's a difficult thing for a guard to come in there and steal that guy off. And if he does, a lot of times he just jump right over him. So they get a lot of shots at the rim, and then they're, you know, they haven't shot it real great, knock on wood, up to this point. So when you miss those two, the long shots equal long rebounds and can create some opportunities that way. So that was a huge, huge emphasis uh, in practice today. Yeah, and I, I, as I look at the stats, they're shooting 30% from three, 42% from the field overall. Is this a game, though, that you've got to get Marco and you've got to get Raleigh, you've got to get your guards down in digging out uh, some of those rebounds? Yeah, I mean, um, our guards have to rebound. That's been a common theme for us since we've been here. I mean, obviously, you see Kadem being rebound at a high level, but we've always told our guys, the best rebounding teams, their guards rebound. And you got to have a nose for the ball. you got to have a toughness to that. And, and we got to do that. we gotta, we got to rebound, work our butt. You should watch them on free throw game. When they shoot free throws, they are just whoosh. That was the last thing we worked on when I left is just simply free throw box outs. And then we got to really take care of the ball because they're going to press us and just create all kinds of havoc. Well, when we talk, when we come back, uh, we're going to talk to Stephen Ashworth, Coach, and, and talk with him for just, just a few minutes. Uh, but I do want to come back in our final segment to, to New Mexico because yep. I remember that press two years ago in the tournament, and then you finally figured it out and were able to kind of run, right. <laughs> run away from him. But uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But next, we're going to talk to Stephen Ashworth, the freshman guard from Lone Peak High School and uh, Alpine, Utah. He's going to join us next here on the Aggie Coaches Show with Craig Smith from the Aggie Sports Network in Learfield, IMG, IMG College. From humble beginnings in 1952, Staker Parson Materials and Construction has grown to become one of Utah's leading building materials businesses and the preferred source for quality sand, rock, landscape products, ready mix concrete, asphalt, paving, and construction services. Being the preferred source means safely building projects with the highest quality. It means presenting the best opportunities for our employees and offering timely delivery and exceptional customer service every time. Being the preferred source also means supporting and building our communities and local economies. You see us every year at Peach Days and at other local events. We help your children learn about our industry with our Rocks Build Our World program. We've supplied the materials and built many of the streets in town and have donated concrete to your favorite recreational spots. We are Staker Parson Materials and Construction, and we are proud to be part of our community.
to the old Chicago Pizza and Tap Room here in Logan for the Aggie Coaches Show with Coach Craig Smith, brought to you by Learfield IMG College and the Aggie Sports Network. Uh, coming up next, we're going to talk to freshman point guard Stephen Ashworth. But uh, first of all, USU Credit Union has been serving you uh, true Aggies since 1957. They have seven locations around Cache Valley, including the branch located at Utah State's campus inside the university's Welcome Center. Utah, uh, USU Credit Union offers financial services such as mortgages, home equity line of credit, student loans and savings and retirement accounts. More information about services and applications are available at usucu.org or in person at any of those branches. And uh, Coach, we're going to have a chance to talk to, to Stephen Ashworth here. And uh, uh, Stephen, are you there with us? Hey, Stephen, we got you. I, I understand you're just barely getting off the court from practice. Is that right? <laughs> yep, I am. Just we just walked up and uh, walked up to Chicago's office actually, and so uh, I'm ready to go. Still warm. You're you're working for a slave driver. <laughs> got him right here next <laughs> hey, to me. We work hard. We, we, you know, we got to come ready for uh, New Mexico, and um, you know, it's it's eight games or I guess eight days on the road and in ten days, and so you know, we're making sure that we're ready both physically and mentally and all of that. Hey, uh, Stephen, before we get into some basketball, uh, I want you to talk a little bit about uh, uh, your recruiting process. Maybe talk to us a little bit about how that recruiting process went. And then I got to ask you about, uh, not that I'm a stalker or anything, but I saw something posted on Instagram that it said, said something like, uh, you may have been having some extracurricular practice, and something that said marry me or something like that. Maybe talk a little bit about your family and what happened to you over the break. Okay, we will do. Um... So coming to Utah State um, was definitely something that I've planned on since my junior year. Um, some of the coaches I was talking to a lot were Spencer Nelson and, and Coach Durier, and um, I was recruited out of high school, out of Lone Peak from them. And, um, and then going into my senior year, actually right before one of my last games, um, I actually got the news that, that we were going to be getting new coaching staff and that Coach Smith and um, the other coaches would be coming with him, and so um, for me it was um, it was kind of different. You know, it was a coaching staff that that didn't initially recruit me, but um, you know, before I left on my mission um, that coming July, um, you know, Coach Smith made sure to meet with me, and you know, I was in a lot of communication with the assistant coaches like Coach Ragland and, and Coach Hanson and whatnot, and so um, you know they they kind of echoed what the other coaches were saying is that, you know, as I, um, if I decided to continue to come to Utah State that, you know, I'd have a great opportunity to play on some great teams and, um, and accomplish our goal of, you know, winning the Mountain West Conference Championship and um, the regular season and, and making a run in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, those are all the goals that I had, you know, before Coach Smith came and, um, and he kind of echoed that. And, you know, as I was on my mission, it was kind of just the fact that, that it felt right. It felt good to to be an Aggie, um, especially being a kid from Utah County, you know, we don't have too many of us that are that are coming up north, but um, I'm sure that the trend will start pretty soon, which I'm excited for, but um, we love Lone Peak kids they, coming to they Utah State. They almost right? every week, um, which, was, which was great, you know, just to stay in contact and whatnot, and, and as things got closer, you know, I, was, I stayed committed, I, I signed those papers um, and continued to come and be an Aggie, and you know, it's been one of the greatest decisions I've made in my life. And so I'm grateful every day to, to put on an Aggie uniform and to play for Coach Smith and play with my teammates. This guy can talk. <laughs> oh, he's, he's learned from the best, Coach. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. But <laughs> hey, but before we, we, we talk to you about your family a little bit, uh, I know you served your mission in, uh, in the Mecca of basketball in Indianapolis. Right. And we just learned today that the NCAA tournament is going to be all in Indiana. For three straight weeks, they're going to bubble it in Indiana, Indiana, right? So maybe talk about that experience of your mission in Indiana and what what basketball is like in that state. Yeah, most well, definitely. Um, uh, lucky enough for me, I actually got to serve quite a bit right there in Indianapolis, um, right where the Final Four would be held. And um, I actually got to meet and teach some of the people that were actually working at the NCAA headquarters right there in Indianapolis downtown. And so um, basketball was, was everything to some of those people. And so... Um, it was definitely a great way to, to kind of share, you know, the message of, of Jesus Christ and of the gospel and, um, and of the hope it's brought to me in my life. And, um, and I think I was able to connect with people that, that I wouldn't have been able to otherwise because they realized how important it was to me, um, especially, you know, 
kind of giving up two years of, you know, my basketball opportunity to go and serve a mission. And um, lucky enough, you know, being the basketball mecca, I was able to play pickup quite a bit and, and play at the local churches and whatnot. And, um, and people kind of became interested in that as well as, you know, there's this little six-foot white kid pulling up in a white shirt and tie, um, you know, being able to play basketball and, and compete out there. They're, they're definitely asking a lot of questions, which allowed me to be able to share, you know, the message that I was out there to share, which is all about the love of the gospel and of our Je- Savior Jesus Christ. And so um, it, was, it was incredible. And, you know, I'm thrilled for the opportunity to, you know, to go back to Indianapolis to play in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, that's our goal. That's our goal to make it back there and make a run and to be there for all three weeks for sure. Hey, Stephen, so most importantly, what was the nickname that you earned um, during some of those, uh, while you were serving your mission and on, in some of those pickup games? So it started going around town that um, my nickname was Boots. Uh, and the way that I earned that nickname was uh, there's this one time where um, a group of missionaries really wanted me to play against some of these guys that came to the church and we had just been out, you know, knocking on doors and talking to people outside all day. And, and it was probably like 15 degrees. So I was in my winter boots, um, you know, in a big coat and whatnot. And so I didn't have any other shoes. And I was like, all right, like, I feel comfortable enough playing in them. And so, you know, I came down and hit a few threes and, and actually crossed the guy up and <laughs> took his ankles. And so everybody started chanting boots. And so that kind of stuck the rest of the mission. And Coach Smith calls me boots every once in a while when I make a good play. So... Oh, maybe we'll get it start rolling up here in Logan. <laughs> it, w- it was great because Stephen's dad, a- after that night, sent me a text. And I can't remember if somebody, I just don't remember, if somebody recorded you making one of those shots. But your dad sent me a text. And I, I-, I thought I had a video of you, of you crossing over someone into your pull-up J. And uh, uh, it was le- I thought it was like, he went into legendary status real quick. <laughs> But, you know, Steven's a guy, um, you know, so much of recruiting is relationships. And, and obviously, Steven was uh, held in high regard all around the country. You know, Steven's senior year, um, the first round of the – Steven was at the national tournament. You guys played Mount Verde, Mount Verde Prep out of Florida, right? They were, yeah, like, ranked like number one in the country. Tournament. Yeah. So this was yeah. literally um, – this was the Friday of the Final Four. And, Stephen, did you have, like, 26 in the second half against Mount Verde? Yeah, so R.J. Barrett was guarding me, and I had 29 in that second half. R.J. Barrett, the, the yeah, third pick of the NBA draft is yeah, playing for the yeah. Knicks, that guy? Yeah, that, that guy that played at Duke. Yeah, that played at Duke. Thing. Yeah. And so, one of the, I don't know if I've ever told you this, Stephen. So, the assistant coach, Ray Miller at Mount Verde, is a very good friend of mine. Uh, he was at St. Pat's, and coached all these big-time guys, and he called me. He goes, hey, like, because they are well-renowned for being a great defensive team. They've won a bunch of national championships. And he goes, we had no answer for that Ashworth kid. And he goes, I found out out, that kid's committed to Utah State. And, of course, I had just gotten hired like five days earlier. And he goes, you better do whatever you need to do to keep that guy uh, uh, at Utah State. So we're super excited. Uh, He's a great young man. Uh, obviously engaged now. We we need to yeah. Stephen. We need to hear some details. Yes, of that. that that's the. De- I mean, forget about the seven points a game in the seventeen <laughs> minutes he's getting on the floor. What, what? Tell us a little bit about what happened over the break, Stephen. Yeah. So uh, over the break, um, I I did get engaged. Um, it was it was a great day. Were you wearing boots? Um, it was Christmas Eve. <laughs> I uh, I wasn't wearing boots. I was wearing Air Force Ones. I should have been wearing boots to keep the tradition going for <laughs> iconic moments of my life. But um. Uh, so I, uh, I actually told my fiance that, um, that we had practice Christmas Eve. Um, and so I, I told coach Smith a little bit of the story when I got back and he's like, man, she must've been cussing my name out. I was like, you know, we, we kept it cool. We kept it cool. And so, um, she wasn't expecting me to, to be there Christmas Eve. Um, and so actually I, uh, my family has a tradition of welcoming Santa in for the little kids and whatnot. And so we had Santa knock at the door and then. We gotta fit another break in here, Kevin. My mom actually went above and beyond. She she rented out a horse carriage, and so uh, after I proposed on the doorstep um, with a "Marry Me" sign that was made by my grandfather. Actually, he's he's kind of a wizard with all those things and, and welding and whatnot. And so that was great. And then we went on a little carriage ride. Um, she did say yes, which was great. Um, 
And we've kind of been um, dating off and on throughout high school, and then we actually both served missions. Um, she jokes that I served more of a vacation, you know, being able to go to the basketball mecca of the world while she went to Paraguay, um, a third world country. But, you know, we definitely learned and, and grew on our own in those opportunities. And then when we came back, things just felt right. And, and after a few months of, of dating and, and feeling things out, we decided that it was time to move forward. So it was definitely an exciting break and kind of just, you know, Carrying on throughout the season, it's, it's been good. That's great, Stephen. Congratulations on that. I guess the last question: uh, Are you true Aggie? Uh, we we are true Aggie. There you go. There you go. All right. That's Stephen Ashworth, <laughs> freshman point guard here for Utah State. Stephen, congratulations on getting engaged and uh, and also for playing so well early here in your career. So, uh, congratulations and uh, thanks for joining us here on the Aggie Coaches Show. Hey, thank you. It was a pleasure. Good to talk to you. That's uh, Stephen Ashworth and. Uh, Boy, he's got a bright future ahead, doesn't he, Coach? Stephen Ashworth, the freshman point guard from Lone Peak High School, joining us here on the Aggie Coaches Show with Craig Smith at the Old Chicago Pizza and Tap Room, brought to you by the uh, Aggie Sports Network and Learfield IMG College. We'll be back after this. Head basketball coach Craig Smith, and that, that was a fun conversation with Stephen Ashworth. What a, uh, what a great young man! So he's um, like he's gonna he has such a bright future on the floor. He's gonna be a very good player. Uh, he's just so cerebral. He's highly competitive. You know, I, whatever height he is and whatever he may, he is he is a competitor. He's gonna fight you like crazy on every 
every drill. He never takes plays off. He's obviously can shoot it at a very high level, but he's just got such a great feel for the game. Um, but then you get a real taste or feel for him. I knew one segment with Steven wouldn't quite be enough. <laughs> um, you just He's a very engaging young man, highly intelligent, but just he's very well thought out, you know, and you can get a feel for all of that. Um, he's just a, he's such a he, – he told me – he had a great – and this is a great line. He's like, uh, I, when people ask me what type of player I am, I, I don't know that I'm a scoring point guard or a passing point guard or whatever. He says I'm a winning point guard. And, and I think that's something that we try to recruit um, to is just find guys that love to win, love that compete, love to play, and that's what Steven's all about. And we're sure fortunate – uh, that he's in our program. Every day you walked in the gym and you're excited to see him because he raises the energy in the gym mm. every single day. You got a bunch of those kind of guys on this team, don't you? You talked a little bit about the connectedness and the and the the cohesion of this group. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, how this group is really coming together. We do. You know, we we scheduled up early. I'm not sure we were ready for some of that. Um, I gave our guys way too much stuff early on, and I had to I had to have a moment of just. You know, it, it, as a coach, you got to really, w what's our issue, right? And I had to look in the mirror. Some of it was our execution on the player's behalf, but certainly I'm not sure I did what I was supposed to do. And we really just have really downsized a lot of the stuff and less is more right now. And now hopefully we can just slowly kind of build up some things that really helped us succeed, you know, um, over the first two years. But you can't, you know, just a lot of young guys – but it's a group of guys that want to be special. They want to represent Utah State in first-class fashion. And it's a group that gets along amazing. I've been coaching 25 years. And our guy, after we beat San Jose the second night, um, um, Brock Miller and Marco Anthony organized, um, what is that called? Santa's, um, when you exchange gifts? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Santa's um, Secret, Secret Santa. Santa. Yeah, there we go. So thank you. So, so I heard about this. Um, right before the game, which makes you on edge a little bit. Like, okay, are we worried about Secret Santa or are we worried about the last game before Christmas, right? So we get done, and that it get, I still get goosebumps thinking about it. Like, they literally organized it. They did it all in the locker room with our student managers, and, and that is such a cool thing. I've never seen our guys do that in 25 years, and mm. and I'm not – yeah, so that was a neat thing. And so we do. We're starting to play connected. We really want to do well. But it, there's growing pains with youth, and there's growing – and then on top of that, you got not, all, nine of these guys. So it's just day-to-day. -day. But it like it's it can be head-scratching at times. I was going to say pull my hair out coaching young guys, but that's like not really an, an option for me. So, um, and then, but you're adding that all together. And so there's moments where you're just like, I can't believe I just saw that. Yeah. And then there's moments like, wow, I can't believe I just saw that. Yeah. That was amazing. So just trying to get them all. And then you do it without a summer. Like, you know what I mean? That we normally would have. And nobody could have predicted that. So that's just part of it. And it's exciting the SDS getting better 1% every day. I was going to ask you about that because, you know, obviously over your first two years, you were peaking at, at the time of the tournament and, and playing your best basketball at the end. How do you – can you program that? Or how do you, you – what's the philosophy in getting your guys peaking as you're moving throughout the course of the conference schedule? Well, we try to, um, and you do it. There's, I mean, there's different ways of doing it, but certainly you're trying to peak physically, mentally, um, um, and then, and then just with your team, right? Just really understanding who you are, what's your identity, what are we really good at? It's really try to concentrate on all those things while understanding these are some things that we're not so great at and, and having self-awareness to understand that. But it's such a long season. It's a, if you do it right, it's a six month, it's just under a six, it's a half a year where you are practicing, traveling, competing, um, nutrition, all that stuff. So I think we're hypersensitive to where are our guys at mentally, trusting what they tell you, um, where are our guys at physically, and, and under, it's almost like a long-distance runner with tapering, right, where you are logging the miles, 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 and then knowing when you got to kind of pull the reins back because 
if you're sharp mentally and you are uh, feel good mentally and you feel good physically, I think you're going to play well, you know, down the home stretch, so yeah. to speak. But but with that too is chemistry, mm -hmm. and a lot of times by that point, guys, some guys are miserable not playing. Some guys are just miserable because. You know, whatever, or they're sick of seeing each other every day. They're sick of seeing the coaches. Sometimes you have coaches that don't want to see the coaches, right? Sometimes you have coaches that want to, don't want to see the players. Sometimes you don't have players that. Sometimes you have players that can't stand seeing the head coach or this assistant coach, or yeah. right. And sometimes you have players that don't want to be around any other players. We've been fortunate, and I'm not trying to brag, but all nine years I've been a head coach, we've been very fortunate to play our best the last month to six weeks when some teams cannot wait for that last game to be over so they can go to the beach or go on spring break or, you know, go wherever, do whatever they want to do. So it's a long season. It's a long time. And I learned that my second year at South Dakota, we had a rough year. We did play our best late, but and we had a few minor issues off the floor. But I just thought, never again. Like, I want guys that we can be proud of, that you can be proud of, that you guys can be proud of. They're not going to be perfect, but every day you can't wait to be around them. Steven Ashworth is a oh. perfect example of one of those guys. And is this, uh, you know, is it something now that you've been able to find the identity of this group, and are you getting to a spot now where you've got your rotation sort of defined? Um, um, it's in some respects, but I, I still think we got a long way to go with some things with our scheme that can really help us on both ends of the floor, completely learning the playbook and understanding that where we can keep climbing. That's what I think is exciting. I think there's so many more things we can get better at. We've certainly found an identity to some respect, but as a coach, I just know there's more things we're going to need to have in the arsenal to beat the best of the best, right, in our league and get to where we want to go. And then we need more consistency and, and find a better way to help some of our guys, especially coming off the bench, whether it's certain lineups or putting them in better positions um, to succeed. Well, Coach, this has been a lot of fun. First one back in a while. Uh, Aggies playing well, four in a row out of the gate. Wednesday night in Lubbock against New Mexico, and then again turning around Friday against New Mexico in Lubbock. Let's hope for another couple of Aggie victories. Absolutely. This weekend. And uh, I know you always like to say, Go yeah, Aggies yeah. here, right? But well, thank you, Kevin. Thanks for filling in, and go Aggies! And that's the uh, Aggie Coaches Show with Craig Smith here from the old Chicago Tap Room and Pizza Pizza and Tap Room, brought to you by Learfield IMG College and the Aggie Sports Network.